This is the Jumper T20 Express LRS edition. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your radio, flash Express LRS, so you can get out and fly FPV with this radio. Now, the radio does come in two versions. There is a 2.4 gigahertz version, as well as a 915 megahertz version. And the process is almost identical, bar one difference, and I'll show you that as we go through. So let's get into the setup process. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is turn the radio on. Jumper T20 does come with a model pre-configured, but I'm gonna show you how to set up a brand new model and go through that entire process. First, we're gonna press the model button once, and then using the scroll wheel, we're gonna to scroll to a new line, press the scroll wheel once, and then press it again to create model. Now we're gonna press the page across button, which is the middle button here, to page across into the model setup. To give the model a name, we're simply going to press once on the scroll wheel, and then you can scroll through to all the letters. So I'm gonna call this Express LRS. To confirm the letter, press the enter button. If you wanted to go with a small case letter, hold the enter button down until it transitions to a lower case letter. For the, now we're gonna scroll down, don't worry about timers customizable switches or trims, pre-flight checks, leave those as they are. When you get to ADC filter, you'll notice it's set to global. The ADC filter is used for planes and helis, not FPV quadcopters. So you wanna set this, if you're flying a quad with this particular model, to off rather than global. We then get to internal RF. Now, Express LRS uses the Crossfire protocol, which is basically how the Express LRS module in the back communicates with the radio. So we wanna set that from internal RF from off to CRSF for Crossfire. And for external RF, we wanna leave this as off. Trainer mode should be off as well. And USB joystick, we're gonna leave that as classic. Now we're gonna press the page over button to go from heli setup, flight modes. You'll see on the mixers tab, it's preset to AETR. This is the channel map that is sent to Betaflight. If you've got a quad without plugging a LiPo in, what you wanna do is just plug that into Betaflight. And then go to the receiver tab and you'll be able to see the channel map for your quad, mine is AETR1234. On my radio, you can see that the channel map here is AETR, and my channel map in Betaflight is also AETR. Now, if your channel map in Betaflight is different to your radio, you're gonna to need to either change it in the radio or change it in Betaflight. And if you've already got a number of quads set up on a specific channel map, like this is one of 10 quads that I have, if not more, and they all run on the AETR channel map. So if you did need to change it on your radio to make sure it corresponds to your quads, this is how you do it. So we're gonna hold down the enter button, that's gonna bring up the sub menu, and then we're gonna scroll down to delete and press enter. And we're gonna do that for all of those channels. Then we're gonna go back up to channel one. So we're gonna click on that once, and then we're gonna scroll down to source and press enter again. And once that is flashing, whatever stick we move, that is going to change what is on that channel. So as I move the pitch, you can see it moves to the aileron. Or when I move roll, it goes to aileron. When I move the yaw, it goes to rudder. Or when I move throttle, it goes to throttle. So because I'm A, which is roll, I'm gonna move the roll and that's gonna set it. We're gonna press the back button once, back button again, and one more time to take us back out. And we're gonna go into channel two, and we're gonna do that again, so A, E, do the same for T, and then last one, do the same for your fourth channel, which is roll. Yours might be a different order. We need to set channel five, which is also known as aux one, and this is gonna be our arming channel. And for Express LRS, this is our arming channel, and it needs to be a two position switch, such as either SA or SB. Express LRS only sends an on or off 
signal on channel five because it is sent on every packet, whereas things like your other switches are sent on every other packet. So you can't use a three position switch because three position switch has low, medium and high as opposed to the two position, which is just on or off. So for channel five, we're gonna press that once. I'm gonna scroll down to source, hit enter, and then we're gonna flick the switch that we're gonna use for arming. So I'm gonna use SA, and then we're gonna hit back three times. And then we're gonna do the same for channel six. We're gonna use whatever switch that we use for channel six, which I use SC. Channel seven, again, same as before. And then channel eight, we've got that there. If you wanted to go and add more channels, such as these custom buttons, these switches, you can absolutely go and do that if you want. Cool, now that we've got the mixers set up, we're gonna hit back and we're gonna just tab across and we're pretty much all good to go in terms of our model setup. But what we wanna do is just make sure everything is working correctly by checking the Express LRS Lua script. We're gonna hold down the menu button to go into the system menu and we can see that we've got tools, Express LRS. This is the Express LRS Lua script. And we're gonna hit enter. And if that loads, it means that we've set up our model correctly and the radio is communicating with the internal module. Now, you'll notice on the Lua script, we can see Aeon T Pro TX. Now, the reason why we need to pay attention to that Aeon T Pro is when we go to flash via Wi-Fi, because we're gonna make firmware specifically for the T20, we're gonna get a model mismatch error. And I'll show you what to do when that happens. But if you're flashing via USB, you're not gonna get that same error. So we can see that the Lua script is working. We can back out of that. If you get a loading error with the Express LRS Lua script, it could be because the mode is set to off for internal RF, or you've turned external RF to crossfire, um, and that's expecting a separate bolt-on Express LRS module, not the internal one. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that internal RF is set to off, and internal RF is set to CRSF. Fantastic. Now, if this is your first time with Express LRS, you are gonna to need to download the Express LRS configurator. So we're gonna to go to expresslrs.org. And then on the main page, we're gonna click download configurator. This is gonna take you to the GitHub page where you can download the latest Express LRS configurator for your computer. So I use Mac, I'm gonna use DMG. To use Windows, you can use one of the Windows ones. So we're gonna go into the configurator and we're gonna select the most recent version available. So for me, that's 3.30, but you might be 3.4, 3.5 or whatever. And then under device category, we're gonna scroll down to jumper. Now you can see there's jumper 2.4 gigahertz or jumper 900 megahertz. If you've got the 2.4 gigahertz version of the T20, you need to select jumper 2.4 gigahertz. If you have the 900 megahertz version of the T20, you select jumper 900 megahertz. For 900 megahertz, you'll see that there's Aeon T20, you would select that. And then in your regulatory domains, you're going to see a few different versions. Now, if you're in Australia, you may wanna select 915, if you're in Europe, you wanna select 868, or if you're in any of the FCC countries like USA, Canada, you wanna select FCC 915. Whatever regulatory domain that you select here for your transmitter, you need to make sure you select the same one when you are flashing your receivers. Now, I don't have the 900 megahertz version of the T20, I have the 2.4 gigahertz version. And if you've got the 2.4 gigahertz version like me, make sure you select jumper 2.4 gigahertz. And then from the device, you wanna select Aeon T20. Even though this has the T Pro firmware on it, we wanna put the right firmware for our radio, which is the Aeon T20. Now we're gonna flash first with USB. We're gonna select Edge TX pass through. In terms of regulatory domains, you wanna select ISM 2400 so you get the full one watt power output. You wanna select your binding phrase, so type that in and any transmitter or receiver that shares the same binding phrase will automatically be bound. Leave UART inverted. You can go and put your home Wi-Fi network and password in and what that's gonna enable you to do is when you're updating, not when we're doing our first flash, but when you're updating your radio for future versions, you can just enable Wi-Fi and it's gonna to connect to your home Wi-Fi network and you can flash it without any cables or having to manually connect to Wi-Fi. But for now, we are going to need to connect via USB. 
Then we can see under manual serial device selection, we've only got Bluetooth incoming port because we haven't plugged our radio in. I'm gonna take a USB-C cable and plug that into the very top. And on the menu, we're gonna see three options, joystick storage or serial. And what we wanna select is USB serial VCP. And then from that manual device selection, if we give it a bit, give that a few moments and we can see we've got Edge TX coming up. If you do not have Edge TX or OpenTX and you're using Windows, one of the things that you're going to need to do is you can get this from Betaflight, is go and download the CP210X drivers. So again, if you don't have Edge TX or OpenTX in the drop down menu, you've just got a list of COM ports. You need to go and get the CP210X USB drivers from this website. A link will be in the description. So we've got Edge TX selected. We're not gonna select force flash and we're gonna press the flash button. And this might take a few minutes, especially if the first time that you've done this. And it's going through. And because I've already done this several times, it's really quick for me. So you can see writing. And that's done. The update the Lua script, you don't need to do that because it already came with the correct Lua script on it. And we're gonna hit back. And we can unplug our radio. And I always recommend just turning it off and turning it back on again, just to force the reboot because sometimes it doesn't force reboot in, on the internal module. So to make sure this works, we're gonna take our quad and then we're gonna go back into beta flight. I'm gonna plug that in. Cool. And we can see if we go in to connect, and we go down to the receiver tab, we've got our channel map. And we can see that as we move our sticks, the right channels move, and we flick our switches, that all works. And now I'm gonna show you how to flash Express LRS via Wi-Fi. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is go into the Lua script. So we're gonna hold down the menu button, and go into the Lua script. You can see up the top, it's got A on T Pro and we don't need to worry about that. All that's gonna happen is we're gonna get a model mismatch warning when we go and flash it with the correct firmware. So we're gonna go into the Express LRS configurator. We're gonna select the latest version. Like before, we're gonna go down to jumper in the device category and select 2.4 if you're using a 2.4 gigahertz radio or 900 for a 900 megahertz radio. Under the device tab, we're gonna select Aeon T20. And it doesn't matter whether we select Edge TX pass through UART or Wi-Fi, we are gonna to need to enable Wi-Fi later. So go and set up your configuration like we did before, and we're gonna click build. Now this is gonna go ahead and build the firmware version and it's gonna pop up in a window. And what we're gonna do is we're then gonna drag firmware.bin to our desktop and we're done. Then from here, we're just gonna minimize that and we're gonna go back into the radio, into the Express LRS Lua script and go down to Wi-Fi connectivity, hit enter and hit enable Wi-Fi. And yep, enter Wi-Fi update, enter. And then what we're gonna do is go back into our computer and we're gonna look for the Wi-Fi hotspot, Express LRS TX. Now you might need to turn your Wi-Fi off and on a few times in order for the network to show up. And then we go Express LRS TX. If it does ask you for a Wi-Fi password, it's Express LRS in lower case. Then we go to our web browser and we go to 10.0.0. 0.1 and we go over to firmware update. We're gonna hit choose file and then we're going to select the firmware.bin file that was on our desktop. We're gonna click open and we're gonna hit update. It's gonna upload that to the transmitter module and after that's uploaded, we're gonna see a target mismatch error. Now remember this radio comes with the Aeon T Pro firmware on the internal module. The internal module in the T 
is pretty much the same as the T Pro, hence why Jumper had that firmware on. So we're now going to update it with the T20 firmware and because the name is different, T Pro versus T20, it's gonna throw out that error. And once we get that error, we're just gonna click continue and we're gonna get it flashed. So we've got target mismatch, uploaded image, unified ESP32 target. We're gonna hit flash anyway. Update complete, please wait a few seconds for the device to reboot. And if we go back into the ExpressLRS Lua script, we can now see that we have T20 2.4 gigahertz TX and that was all done. Now you've got your Jumper T Pro set up, all you need to do is go out and fly. And one quad I'm really liking at the moment is the Flyfish RC Volador 3.5 inch. So watch this video here to find out just what that quad is like to fly. I'm Darren Allett, until next time, don't forget to send it.